There are two types of trains in this world. Ones that are powered by steam, and ones that aren't. And if you think the age of steam is truly dead, you're wrong. Some of the steam engines that were never scrapped were restored into operating condition so that way they can run again. Sometimes on a tourist railroad and sometimes on the main line. Either way, people were glad to know that steam engines were running again. These steam engines were known as excursion stars, but sadly, some excursion stars had to retire for certain reasons. Happily, some of those retired engines could run again very soon, but right now, I'm gonna count down the top 11 retired steam excursion locomotives. And I will have a couple British engines on this list, but the American ones will have to number them by a lot. Ah, another rip-off of Christopher Kovacs, and Jim Van Der Kolk, too. And why 11? Like the Nostalgia Critic, because I like to go one step beyond. Number 11, The Nickel Plate Road, 587. The 587 is a lightweight 282 Mikado built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1918. It used to be owned by a different railroad known as the Lake Erie and Western Railroad and used to have a different number, 5541. In 1923, the LENW was merged into the New York, Chicago, and St. Louis Railroad, the Nickel Plate Road, and renumbered it 587. The engine did have a lot of changes during its life, like the fact that its cylinders failed and were replaced with Lima Locomotive Works cylinders, and it got a new tender. That's because the 639 had traded a tender with 587s since the 639's tender needed repairs. 587 remained in Broad Ripple Park until 1983. At that time, the city of Indianapolis was interested in building a new public library in the park but the only available location was where the 587 was displayed. In 1983, friends of 587 had bought the engine from the location for restoration, and they got it to run again in 1988. It had once did a rare triple header with two famous excursion stars known as the Norfolk and Western 611 and 1218. A dead head run to the Asheville and NHRS convention. In 2003, its operating permit had expired and had to retire, but in 2005, a second restoration has begun, although it's 2017 and the engine is still undergoing a restoration. Man, this restoration is taking forever. Number 10, the Chesapeake and Ohio 2716. Most 284s are called Berkshires, but the CNO decided to name their Berkshires Kanawas. When diesels replaced steam, the Kanawa was purchased by the Clinchfield Railroad for restoration, but then the Seaboard Airline had bought out the railroad, and the plans to restore 2716 
was cancelled, but they could at least guarantee it would never be scrapped. It was later on sold to the Norfolk and Southern Steam Program for restoration. And when they restored it, it was in disguise as Southern 2716 to show people what a Southern super-powered steam locomotive would look like. Later on, there were cracks in the firebox, and Nickel Plate Road 765 had took its place. Later on, they solved the firebox problems and got the 2716 to run again. Later on, both Berkshires needed repairs, and then they had to come with a decision. They could repair 765 or install new flues in 2716. And to repair 765, what they did, the 2716 had to retire, and it hasn't been running ever since. But there is a restoration going on, which began on February 7th, 2016. The engine should be able to run again in the not too distant future. Speaking of Chesapeake and Ohio steam locomotives that had a ton of makeovers, the 614 Greenbrier. It was built in June 1948, but then had to retire in 1952. It was preserved and put on display at the Baltimore and Ohio Railway Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. Later on, Reading T1 number 2101 had caught fire in the Roundhouse Fire, and then 614 had to take the engine's place. It pulled the Chessy Safety Express to educate the public of grade crossing safety. They should also educate the public of fire safety because this had happened. After the Chessy Steam Safety Express, the engine has, was fitted with multiple sensors and scientific equipment for Ross Rowland's new project, the ACE 3000, to build a new coal-fired locomotive since oil prices were so high. The engine put on a great show and delivered great results as it hauled a heavy coal train up steep grades. But then, the ACE 3000 was cancelled when the oil prices lowered. The engine went back to excursions and it was able to set loose and run heavy trains very fast. And then it was painted in green for the Greenbrier Presidential Express, but that was cancelled. Today, the engine is on display at Clifton Forge, Virginia, but there is a good chance that restoration will be on this engine very soon. Number 8, Union Pacific Challenger, number 3985. It was built in 1943 by the American Locomotive Company pulled its last revenue service in 1957. In 1962, it was put in storage in a roundhouse in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and displayed outdoors in 1975. Beginning in 1979, a group of Union Pacific employee volunteers started work on restoring the locomotive and it returned to operational condition in 1981. It was a coal burner, and it caused grass fires, so in 1990 they converted it to oil fire. In 1991, it was chosen to pull the Clinchfield Santa train, 
as Clinchfield 676, stationed at Cheyenne with other equipment. It even pulled the Ringling Brothers, Barnum, Bailey, and Circus train. Its last run was in October 2010, and was put in storage in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And on February 26, 2015, Union Pacific had decided to restore the engine after 4014 finishes its restoration. They say it will probably take a while. But hey, at least we'll have 4014, which looks just like it running again. And it's gonna be even bigger. End of the video, but not the list. Be sure to click on part two for more.